welcome back to the cafe. So I've caught the autumn bug and I'm so excited for autumn now. We've had a few really chilly, autumny kind of days here in Colorado lately. And it's really got me thinking about leaf prints and the jelly plate. And so I went a little wild again. I've been doing a lot of jelly printing lately and I really wanted to share these four ways of doing uh, leaf prints on your jelly plate. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna move these aside and let's do a quick little gallery flip through showing. Now some of these that you make are gonna be perfect to frame and hang on the wall. I really love this one and I think that's what I'm gonna do with this one here. And then of course you can use all these for collage, you can scan all of your work and um, then you can use them all for whatever you want and continue to have prints. This is such a relaxing therapeutic art form to me. It's, um, you will end up with quite a few duds. I always end up with duds when I do leaf printing on the jelly plate and it's just part of the process. So um, not to worry if that happens to you if you have not done this before. And all of these uh, prints here that I've got today, this is all stuff that I've done before. Uh, some of it I have seen before right here on YouTube. Uh, there's all kinds of really cool videos floating around on this technique. So I just wanted to, since I went so wild and made so many, I just wanted to get them all in one place. This is a beautiful metallic one here. I just wanted to get all these techniques together in one place so that you could be like, oh, okay. Because when you're printing one way, um, the opportunity to get other leaf prints comes up simultaneously as you're printing with one technique. So I kind of just wanted to get it all together. I'm not going to be using all of the colors that you're seeing in these today. I've got a very limited palette just so that we can really get to the technique. And then of course you can go wild with with, um, whatever colors you want to use. These are great little collage pages to use for your artwork here. Yeah, I really wanted to focus and zero in on the technique, so I have limited the palette today, but they're beautiful contrasting colors so that you can really get a lot of leaf prints in a hurry and have them show up beautifully and of course you know we talk about contrast here i like to talk about contrast as a volume control and i like to turn the volume way up on the contrast with leaf prints just so that you can see all the detail so if you use highly contrasting colors you're going to get really really amazing results like this this background color here um, I either used I think this is Titan buff in fact I'm pretty sure it is it really serves to let you see the the beauty and the detail of your leaf prints that contrast I really did go wild guys look at this beautiful little leaf it had a couple other leaves attached to it so I left them on there and printed them together I tend to like to uh, snip the end of the stem off because that's the thickest part right there and it it makes your print not come out as great so you can snip those right off like here's a good example of where I had snipped them off and then here's where I left it just little things like that that make a big difference here's a really beautiful one now your uh, fluid acrylics work beautifully for this technique and you know most of the paints I get these folk art paints that we're going to go over the palette uh, right after this so most of the folk art paints I get are very creamy and kind of thick and I like to just put a few drops right in my bottle of paint 
and shake it up and um, thin it just the tiniest bit because then you can get that beautiful fluid look if you like that look. So here's the last one of this style and we'll be going over this style. I went wild. Uh, I've been having some challenges and so I just decided, you know what? screw it i'm painting i'm just gonna shut my door and close the world out of my life and i'm gonna have a jelly printing session and that's what i did and i'm glad i did because i ended up with a lot of really good prints here so here's the second way you could just make your prints right on to plain paper and get beauties just like this for collage this one didn't come out too great but these came out really nice so you know you will have some duds you definitely will it's just the more you do it you know the more you're gonna run into that and it's okay with me I think it's worth it just to get all the really good ones that you do get now here's the third technique. This is a little off center and we'll talk about that as we do it. Here's a really fun one. I like this one. These are just great. And then if you want to, of course, you can spray these with your coffee. This one I did spray with some coffee. So you can really make them uh, tone down the white if you don't like the, all that bold white in there. Here's one that was kind of a eh, okay, but eh, just okay. And then here's a ghost print, and I really like this one. It's got some bronze in it. It's got some really nice, beautiful color in it. And then last but not least, you can get some prints on some pre-painted jelly plate. That's what I did here, jelly prints. And they come out okay. We'll talk more about all this as we do it. It's gonna be kind of a long video, but I think it's worth it because there's a lot to this little technique here. So I think it's a time well invested. Here's some more that can be just torn apart. And this one I got some good prints and some not so good prints on, but it's a beautiful sheet all in all. And you can even push this back by painting over it a little bit. So the possibilities are endless and I'd like to go over the materials and colors that we're gonna be using. So let's get into this. So you're gonna want a nice assortment of leaves and I really like to pull from trees myself. And the thing is, there's only really one good tip about this that will bring you great success. I always print, of course, with the vein side into the paint and you just really wanna make sure that you're choosing leaves that have nice, strong, thick veins that you can easily feel. Um, aspen leaves are the worst for this just because they're veining is more embedded into the leaf itself. So anything with a nice deep vein is gonna give you amazing results. So you need your uh, leaves. And then I've got a bunch of runoff sheets over here to the side. And I love to just keep building these up until I get them completely covered. And then I like to use these as collage artwork too. Here's kind of a halfway decent leaf print that kinda came out, but not not really so that ended up in that pile I'm using my 8x10 jelly plate today because I just want to keep this really manageable and then I've also got my three and a half by five and a half inch jelly plate and I've got my little miniature brayer here and my brayers are in very big need of cleaning and then I've got my bigger brayer here too. And I really just need to take my razor knife to this and clean the edges. So that's how I like to clean mine, just a quick little tip there. So there's all of those things you're gonna need. You're gonna need quite a bit of, um, oh, here's the other thing. I have a giant stack of printer paper next to me. And I love to use just plain printer paper for this technique. It it tends to work the best. Now you can also have 
some of these sitting around. These are runoff uh, jelly print sheets that are, they were done enough for me probably because they were within reach. So I went ahead and used them. But you can pull leaf prints as you'll see too with the jelly plates. You can pull leaf prints with whatever kind of paper you can imagine you can do it and then um, plenty you want to have plenty of the printer paper I also like to have a mouse pad around because it's a nice soft surface to grab your paper and then push the leaf into and of course we'll go over that too so if you don't have a mouse pad that you don't mind getting paint on you can use foam core uh, felt even a towel would probably work beautifully as well so let's go over the colors we're going to be using today to keep this palette very simple and uh, tried and true colors that I love to use. I've got my Deco Art Metallic Rich Espresso color here. I've got my Folk Art Matte Vintage White. Folk Art has really focused on coming out with matte and um, I think they've got a satin. They've got all different uh, finish sheens to their paints and I am a matte girl all the way so I love that that's a tried and true color for me I've got this beautiful fluid golden iridescent gold deep color here it's just gorgeous and then this is one of my favorite folk art colors. It's called Asphaltum. It's a very dark, rich brown color. I just love it. I love it. I love earth tones and I really love that color. And here's another one of my favorites too. This is Folk Art Matte Raw Sienna. So those are the colors we're gonna stick with today. And let's get into this. All right, so to start us off, I'm going to use this leaf sprig here for the first way to do it. And we're going to end up with a couple different prints. Some of these different ways of getting leaf prints kind of all happen together when you're, as you're getting ready to create one, you can pull others. So let's go ahead and use our first color. I'm gonna go ahead and use this Asphaltum color by Folk Art. It's a nice, dark, rich brown color. And I wanna just use this to show the depth of contrast that you can get when you're using dark and light for this little technique here. So you want a nice, consistent, even spread of paint. And you don't want it too thick, but you also don't want it too thin. This can be a little tricky. It just takes a bit of practice to get used to it. So the first way we're going to do this is we've laid down our paint. Now we're going to go ahead and put our leaf down. And they can be very tricky. This one is wanting to overlap. So I'm going to go ahead and let it fall the way it wants to. And then you want to take a fresh piece of paper and go over top. Now you want good adherence. You can use a dry brayer. You can use your hands. I have this little tool that I saw on um, Facebook and I talked about this in my last jelly printing video and it's just a knob handle super glued to a furniture skid. Really easy little tool and it's nice and smooth on this side because these are designed to stick under the legs of your furniture and slide them across the floor. So a uh, very smooth surface to work with here. Now I like to work on printer paper. I'm just using regular eight and a half by 11 inch printer paper. And I really want to get in between those leaves too. But when you're working with printer paper, you have to work fast or the jelly plate will start to pull up the paper on you. So here's this first print here. Now I've seen this done in the past. This technique is not mine. This is something that I've seen done before. And the gal taped her paper down. Now I'm using a plate that's a little too big to be able to tape mine down. So I'm not gonna do that today, but you're more than welcome to do that so that it lines up 
up completely perfect. I eyeball it and I'm okay with that. So now what I wanna do, here's another way to get a print. I've got this runoff sheet, this jelly print runoff. You want a soft surface underneath to really capitalize on this leaf print. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off. Now I have to work very quickly at this point because I want to print this sheet and get the actual leaf to print as well. So you wanna have kind of a dry piece of paper handy for this. And you wanna transfer this over to here. I'm gonna let this fall naturally ah, as much as I possibly can and take this piece of paper and really push down hard on this to get this print. Now the softer of a surface, I would even recommend using some felt or a towel and you can brayer over this. You can use your little skid tool. You can just use your fingers, whatever you have handy, but you've got to catch this one while it's wet. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. And then of course, remember the little tape trick because this is kind of, um, it doesn't land exactly where it could if you were to use tape. So I just didn't take the time to do that. Sometimes I just really want to get stuff done and I don't always do things right <laughs> in the spirit of wanting to get it done quickly. Now again, this is printer paper, so I want to pull this pretty quickly. Oh, I did pretty good on this one. So I got this gorgeous print, just like that. Here's one way to do this. Now, if you don't like the stark white, you can of course just take your coffee sprayer bottle and give this a spritz and kind of darken up that area and then just set this one aside to dry. But what a lovely way to get a print. The other great thing about doing this is you get this ghost print as well. And we will deal with that in a moment. Now, to get, if you really want these leaf prints to come out pristine and perfect, if you do one leaf at a time, your chances of pulling a good print off of this technique are much better. But we did all right, look at that. Now, of course, you can do this on plain paper and get yourself a nice print, and I had some of those in the uh, gallery, of course. And then you can do jelly plate prints. You can really get your leaf prints on anything that you wanna use, scrap of paper, hand-painted paper, whatever you wish, even fabric would work beautifully. Maybe I'll make a video about that soon now that I thought of that because that's um, it's got that soft surface and you're printing with acrylic paint so it would be very easy to get nice results with fabric and I will pick up some muslin and do a video on that so now I've got kind of a hot mess here with this wet one jelly printing is such a space invasive art form. I want to be careful of my ghost print. So let me set this aside and I'll be right back. For this little ghost print here, I'd like to pull it with my Folk Art Matte Vintage White color. I really love this color for printing. It's so soft and subtle and really a lovely color. And this is another thing that takes a little bit of practice. You really don't need much paint at all. In fact, I might have gotten a little too much, but it will come to you, of course, as you do this. So if you're new to jelly printing, there is a bit of a learning curve and it just takes experimenting and practicing and you can come up with some really amazing techniques. I remember watching Robin McClendon a very long time ago and she had said that she had had a jelly printing session and uh, she had walked away from it with her plate dirty and didn't clean it and then tried to pull a print later off of her plate with the dirt the dried kind of gummed up 
paint on the plate and she got the most beautiful results from that and that was from a happy accident and she was gracious enough to share that with all of us so I have benefited from that happy accident so much as so many of us have okay now with your printer paper you really do need to pull these fast because your plate can tear this paper it can it can be a hot mess and it will happen to you just know that it's going to happen to you and then when it does it won't be a shock and it won't be anything that you did um, wrong other than leaving the paper too long but what i'm saying is is this is it's a finicky art form as you know so and if you don't know now you know <laughs> so here's this beautiful print that we got and all the detail that was left just on that ghost print that's one of my favorites so let's move into the next way to do this now i'm going to go ahead and use the same leaf sprig because i'm kind of running out of these so for this one we'll do this leaf sprig and let's use this matte folk art raw sienna color for this one now you want your plate juicy enough to um, be able to get a good print but you also want it very consistent every time everything I do with the jelly plate so far I really need a consistent smooth amount of paint on my plate um, that's just kind of been a run-of-the-mill normal thing for me so I'm gonna rub that off I love this raw sienna color and I just love a matte finish so let's go ahead and put this back on and this is another technique that is very hit or miss but we're going to go ahead and do it just so I can show you I'm going to take all that extra paint off with a fresh sheet of paper and when you're pulling when you want to pull a lot of paint off of your plate you really do need fresh paper because uh, paper that's already got paint on it while it prints beautifully like this sheet right here you can pull up and get a really nice beautiful grunge sheet out of this but it won't be effective in pulling up a lot of paint if that's what you're after so just a little side note to know about I'm going to put this mouse pad here and then what I want to do is pull this print and I'm being very careful not to touch my leaf. I don't want to disrupt the leaf at all. And then I'm going to take this over here. Now this is the opposite. So I don't always like to do this, but you can do it and it is another way. But as you can see, so this leaf is here and vice versa. So we're going to be laying this print down opposite on this um, paper and it's not going to line up but these still make some pretty nice prints just the same i'm gonna have to wangle it the tiniest bit and then i want to take a dry runoff sheet oh yeah i got a lot going on over here and just place that very carefully and then this one I'm going to set aside to let dry now the nice thing about this print here is that uh, I didn't pull a print with this paper so you're going to get a lot more color and depth out of this one here's our last print the ghost print that we pulled this one will be a little bit more intense with color because all that paint is still on the plate the only downside to this technique right here is you have to wait for this to dry completely it ends up being a tad bit more time consuming so this is not going to line up perfect here. 
but I've gotten some fun prints this way. See, we hardly got anything out of that one. So that was kind of a dud, but this is still a really cool sheet and it, the sky's the limit. You can still do a lot of really fun things with these. You can use this as a template. You can paint inside the lines. You can do all kinds of stuff with that. Also, I used this uh, sprig more than once and the more you use your leaves, the less effective they become with every pull. So there is that too. There's a lot of little things to know about this technique that just, they just show up as you go. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna let this dry and be right back. I thought it would be fun as we're waiting for this to dry a little bit. It's actually pretty dry now, but I would like to border this with a little bit, let's do some rich espresso uh, deco art metallic paint. And I'm just gonna do a tiny bit on my little three and a half by five and a half inch um, jelly plate. And then I've got a little brayer here that I wanna use. And I wanna smooth this out across my brayer get a nice consistent amount. And then I'm just gonna throw little bits of this copper color or this espresso color onto the plate to add interest to our print. These kind of prints I love. This is something you can frame straight once it's dry. This is a frameable piece of art. It's a collage piece of art. It's whatever you want to do. There's just so many possibilities as to what you can do with these prints. That'll give us just a little bit of interest on this one for fun. And you can go wild with all your textures. Today I wanted to cover uh, leaf prints three ways, which you end up getting like four or five actually out of all these techniques. But um, we will cover texture. We'll do a lot more stuff because there's just so much more fun to be had with the jelly plate. So now I need to go ahead and pick the color that I want to go over this. This is already dry because I put it on so incredibly thin. Now I'm going to go with the Folk Art Matte Vintage White. I've had a lot of great luck with this paint here. And let's talk about that for a second. The Golden Titan Buff is excellent too, but there are a couple problems with Golden Titan Buff. The binders in this paint are much stronger. And when you're working with printer paper, it has a tendency to make it so that your paper pulls apart easier. So uh, using the Golden Titan Buff is a great paint to use for this, but it's a bit harder to work with than the, this um, vintage white color here. Okay, that's plenty. It That might be a little too much. So we want a nice consistent spread again, as always. And if I have too much, I can simply offload over here, as always. <laughs> you know, it's all real basic. Um, jelly printing uh, techniques that go into doing this with the pressed leaves. Now, my brayer is clogged up with paint and I'm gonna have to take the time to fix it because look, it's streaking and it's not rolling and it's taking too much paint off. Now I can get away with this right here, but that brayer really needs to be cleaned. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this print. And then I have another brayer sitting here that's in pretty good shape. It's in a little bit better shape than my other ones. So I'll just have to take a razor blade to that, a razor knife and clean that up a bit. I've been jelly printing so much lately that it's been happening to me a lot. So look at how fast I just ran over that with my cool little skid tool and um, that fast this got pulled. So look at the gorgeous copper. I'm hoping I wanna get the light to catch that. Ah, oh, it's really tricky. Come on now. Yep, 
you can see it a little bit here and there. It just adds such a lovely touch. And then see the intensity. They're both very nice prints, but the one on the right really is a lot more intense because this one, of course, was a ghost print and this one was a straight up print. So you can just really have amazing results. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more now and we'll play around with that copper. Um, the rich, I keep calling it copper, it's rich espresso. I'd like to use some more of this asphaltum color. So let's get a consistent little amount. I'm gonna go ahead and use the gummed up brayer since I'm, I don't know why. I'm just gonna use it because it's right here. <laughs> I definitely need to take time out to clean this thing because it they will give you headaches if you don't. <laughs> At least mine do to me, that's for sure. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a couple different leaves on here and we'll add some more of that copper. Here's a real lovely one. I kind of miss the tip. So you want to be mindful when you're putting these on of um, where they're going and all that good stuff. And you can drape them over the edge. It makes for such a beautiful look. That one's a little too big. These little leaf sprig uh, leaves print really beautifully. I'm having a little trouble finding one small enough. Let's just use this one. And of course, you can pick your placement before you lay your leaves down. And like what I did, I just kind of went on the fly and paid for it a little bit because I didn't take the time to mess with my placement. So all just kinds of little things that come up as you're doing this printing. I've got some really beautiful background jelly uh, runoff sheets and grungy jelly prints like this one I did a little earlier. It didn't come out fabulous, but it's all right. It's good collage fodder, but uh, you can definitely put some leaf prints. We'll keep this out and put it here so that we can pull a couple more of these prints. I've always found that I really need to get in here with my fingers on the leaves themselves to get really good uh, detail out of these leaf prints. So there's that. Be again, careful, careful not to touch it. And we could go ahead. Now you have plenty of time if you leave the leaves on. Once you pull the leaves, this starts to dry out. And that is really true with the Titan Buff. So I really don't like to use the Titan Buff for this uh, beginning phase right here. Let's go ahead and pull our little plate. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this rich espresso metallic color on the plate while it's still wet or while it's still wet while it's still got the leaves on here and I'm just gonna go kind of over the leaves and around this is such a fun way to frame your art and of course you can use black you can use whatever color you want you can really bring the drama with this technique here I wasn't gonna do this. I was gonna keep this video really basic, but I couldn't resist and it's so beautiful and it's still pretty basic, really. It's just an extra little step. Now, like I said, if you did this with the leaves off, um, they're gonna dry out on you and you're gonna end up with, um, it won't pull. So we'll go ahead and pull these onto this sheet this time again and uh, Let's go ahead and get a couple prints. You gotta be mindful to have a piece of paper ready and have this over my mouse pad. And you wanna be careful not to disrupt that because of course you can get some blurry uh, leaf prints and you will, it will happen to you. So we got somewhat of a print there, just a bit. 
not the best it really is a hit or miss and if you're doing let me just show you if you do it on paper that doesn't have paint on it it works much better um, the paint on this paper uh, kind of hinders being able to pick up a really strong print you can it can happen but it is hit or miss now you'll see what we've got going here so i've got to say this is already drying i moved way too slow so i'm not gonna use this sheet to pull it i'm gonna set this sheet aside and i'll figure out something else to do with it because this is already mostly dry and it just won't pull it let me get over here and frame these print so beautifully. And I find that I get the best prints when I use my fingers. These really print beautifully too. So we'll get a couple of prints here. And then of course you can scan these if you wanna use them over and over again. Or you could just tear this right off and use the original. I used all the uh, jelly plate leaf prints I made from the last time I did this, I used on the 100 days of collage, so I really need some more leaf prints and look. So the paper takes it much better when you're using straight paper, but you can still get some fun papers. It just, little things to take note of as you're doing this. So now that this is partially dry, but not completely, I do have to wait until it's entirely dry. One fun thing we could do, these are both pretty juicy. So I'm gonna come in and pull these two prints. And I'm just gonna gently go over the whole thing. Another thing this will do is I'm still gonna get a great print out of what's on the plate, but this will dry what's here much faster. Oh look, I got lucky again with my placement. <laughs> Getting pretty lucky, look. I, I rubbed over that lightly and got nothing because it was all dry, but this one came out really beautiful. And this one came out kinda cool. It's bold in graphics, so you can always do that too. That's the thing about this, you know, sometimes it's just really hit or miss. I've got a lot of thick buildup here on the edge of my plate that I'll be needing to clean pretty soon. <laughs> so now that we have this one dry, and that's a great way to dry it, is to pull these. And if you're doing like one big leaf at a time, this works so much better than when you're doing multiples. Now, if you just pull the leaf and you're not concerned with getting a leaf print, of course, you can get to this much faster. But it's great to do that because it gets your plate dry a lot quicker. I'm gonna go ahead and use this uh, uh, vintage white again. I keep wanting to call it French vanilla. And I'm just loving that, oops, went right off the plate. I am loving this rich espresso edging. It's such a lovely way to do it. And we'll do it again. We'll do one more print and we'll do it with this iridescent gold so that it shows up more. Oh, I could be in trouble using this brayer again, but let's do it here. Pull this print real quick. So I've got my paint a little too thick. And that is not good for this technique because it will leave a lot of your leaf behind on the plate. You want, you want it thick enough to be wet all over the plate, but thin enough that you can pull it quite quickly. If it's too juicy, um, the results will not be great. And you'll get a feel for it. You'll get a feel for it just after doing a couple. I love the printer paper because it makes um, my jelly printing se sessions go much quicker, but it's also, um, you really have to not let it stay too long and it can be tough to gauge it. 
but look at how fast we just did that in real time and look at what a gorgeous print we got and i had my paint amount correct got a little up here because of that blob but i had my paint amount correct and it was able to pull everything off of the plate and then look at that gorgeous rich espresso in the background so let's do another one like this with some of that bright gold just so that we can see it a little better and you can really get to see another uh, pull of what you can do you know it's just limitless I make such a gigantic mess as we all do here I'm gonna pull these prints that I did this one's okay I think it's great for a collage this is a great collage piece I'm gonna take these right here and set them aside be right back so I'm really excited. I had such a great time doing the 20-piece uh, collage collaboration with Lizbeth Dagan. She is one of my favorite artists, and to be able to do that with her was such a treat. I really enjoyed it, and I'm glad I got them all filmed, and I scheduled them, so they're still coming out right now, and then I'm gonna do another flip through of all of those uh, together at the very end and I'm just so excited about it because now I've got 20 more pieces of artwork that are pretty cool and I can move forward <laughs> I have so much I want to do and one of the things I really want to do is uh, get some paper kits together with all the sample wallpaper I have I have so much of it I'm just never going to be able to use it all so I want to get that into circulation and um, all kinds of fun stuff I've got planned for this autumn and upcoming winter. I really hope that we have a long autumn season this year. I've got the bug. I'm really excited about autumn being here now. I am so ready for autumn. So I did it to myself again. I did not have my leaves picked out and placed before I did this. I'm gonna do like a journal page style pull here and look, I did it again. I wanna get this tip in the image. So there we go. Just gonna gently push on that. And then, Oh, I have a real tiny one here. Let's go ahead and pop this one into the corner. And then let's, uh, if I can find a little, here's a little leaf. We'll just fill this plate with these three. I do that all the time. I constantly forget to do my placement. Now we'll go ahead and go over this. I want to go ahead and get, I'm going to scoot stuff around and work very quickly. The jelly plate is so fun, but it's a kind of a, um, oh, how do I want to say it? It's a bit of a persnickety. That's kind of a funny word to use, but it's a bit of a persnickety art form, kind of a snotty art form. It's like demands that you treat it right or it won't give you good results. You know what I mean? So I'm, I could do this page again, but like I said, when I'm doing multiples, it just becomes kind of a problem. So let's go ahead and work on this and we'll get, we'll fill this with some really beautiful collage worthy leaf prints here. And then these are so fun here. And if you have any ideas of what can be done with these, please shoot them in the comment section below for me because I have a lot of these and I don't wanna let them go. I think they're really amazing, but I would like to do something with them. So now I'm just gonna focus on one at a time. And what's nice about doing this as well, we'll put this guy here is that I have to wait for this to dry anyway, so I can really take my time 
with getting these prints and getting them right. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to focus on one at a time and get a pretty good print. Now this is where your fingers are going to do the absolute best job. Let's see if we, I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit that. Let's put this one on here, right here. And we'll start a new page for collage leaf prints with that big one. These leaf sprigs are really common. I'm not sure of what species this is, but I'm in Colorado and they are all over the place in the city, these trees. And they print so beautifully. And as you can see, when you work with the leaves just individually, you really get phenomenal prints. Got a very nice print from that sprig. And then of course you can always come in and draw in a stem, very easy. Oh, my problem is the same as everyone else's. I start to run out of room for all the papers that are drying. <laughs> okay, Corey, make sure you get your point. Get to the point, Corey. Just kidding. <laughs> So now we've got this lovely leaf that looks like it got a big bite taken out of it. That's gonna make an interesting print. I like to use leaves that aren't perfect. Quite often in my artwork, um, that never bothers me. In fact, I think it's kind of a bonus because, you know, there's so much beauty in imperfection. So, I don't know, I just love it. Let's pull this baby and see what we got. Oh yeah, beautiful. So it just goes to show the difference of what you can come up with. Now this is still a really nice print and um, in the gallery I did come up with a lot of really good prints on top of jelly plates, but they it really does adhere to uh, this plain paper the best. So you've got tons and tons of options. Now this is still a little bit wet and I'm gonna carefully do our gold. I'm using Golden Iridescent Gold Deep for this one. And I just want to bling it up a little. I think it's really fun to do this part. There's so many techniques with the jelly plate that I have to, and I've been, I've been doing a lot of jelly printing lately. I've had some challenges going on in my personal life and I've had some struggles happening. And now I have to be really careful because these are still wet, so I'm, I'm being a bit risque here. But, um, you know, I turn to artwork when I'm having a hard time, I do. And it, it saves me every time. So um, I've been doing that lately. And, you know, these life just has its challenges, does it not? Oh my goodness. And, um, you know, we can't control other people, which, oh, if people would just do what I want them to do, <laughs> I wouldn't have these issues right now. But uh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so I've got to kind of suck it up and make my decisions based on what other people are <laughs> deciding, I guess. So now you want to be really careful. But it's okay that I went over this a little bit because this leaf print is going to show up first. It's the bottom layer. So you just want to be careful. This is going to be kind of choppy and a little clunky looking of a print, but I like it. Now, if I would have waited for everything to dry, which let's do this, my gold is really dry. So let's just try to pull a tiny bit off of here because I wanna show you why. And I'm sure you've probably already got it figured out. So I'm just pulling the last little bits of wet and look, we didn't really get anything. 
so it's fine. But um, now, if you wait and you're patient and you wait for this to dry, you can go over the leaves with some of this gold and then it will pick up and, and shine through the leaf itself. So like I was saying, there are there is so much complexity to jelly play art. You can keep it really simple which I have yet to figure out how to do. <laughs> Every time I play with my jelly plate, it becomes uh, quite the undertaking. So maybe I shouldn't say you can keep it really simple. I believe you can though. I really believe you can. But uh, for me, there's so many different magical techniques that, um, you know, it's just gonna take different videos to cover stuff. Okay, so I got that nice smooth, adhesion and I don't want it you know now I'm going crazy with the gold I say I don't want it everywhere but uh, too late too late Cory too late so we'll go ahead and let it be a wild gold beautiful print all right this is pretty dry so I'm gonna go ahead and risk it Yep, I sure am. And I'm gonna stick with the vintage white. That's another thing. When I'm pulling prints like this on my plate, I like to shake all of my paints really well before I start a session. And uh, when I find a pull color that works really well, like the vintage white, I tend to stick with it. I, um, I like the color combos of these. They're very autumn-y. And um, I just, when I find something that works as well as this, I do. I just tend to stick with it. Now that can get a little boring. You definitely want to think outside of the box sometimes. But it's also nice to just have a, you know, kind of a traditional printing session where you don't deviate from the basics and you just let yourself have some tried and true prints. I love both. I love to experiment and I also really love to stick to what I know works really well. And the great thing about sticking to what you know that works really well is uh, then you get to um, really the sky's the limit with that too because you can use different textures you can use texture plates stencils cardboard leaves seashells whatever you can think of that has a texture you can use using those basic tried and true techniques so i love that too now this should be ready with that printer paper if i got my pull right which it looks like i did it really is all in that final layer. See, I've got some white there, so I'm gonna try. But this doesn't tend to work for me. Yeah, it really didn't. But that's okay, and that's gonna happen. So look at that lovely gold, wow. What a gorgeous print. And then you've got the gold backing up some of the leaf and that gorgeous vintage white color. And then these little white marks right in here that didn't pick up any color, those are served really well with your coffee spray. And I, a uh, long time ago, I saw this, I've seen this all over lately, the spray bottles, and I thought, what a great idea, because I've always had the big one, and I've always had it, you know, at my real big messy production table where I don't film, but where I mass produce coffee stained paper. And then I saw this on Fairy Treasures, and she said, Angie Bell, that's her channel, My Fairy Treasures, she said, she she uh, picked that up from Robin. So what a great way to have your jelly printing and then you can just spray it real quick and get rid of the little white. This one's gonna need, I, my coffee's a little weak so I need to mix it a little stronger. But what a fun way to get a bunch of different prints. I hope you enjoyed this and if you like it, 
come on back, hit the subscribe, hit the bell notification, hit the like and come back and we will have more fun with the jelly plate in the near future. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.